All right, we're going to take um, the contacts and have them change. They're, they're obviously broken. They're not working. You'll have to take these out and these screws as well, the nuts. And then underneath you'll see some cable clamps. Uh, and once you do that, this whole unit will sort of come down. Uh, and um, we can uh, get a little more room with the quarter-inch driver uh, by removing this over here. And you have to be careful not to break any wires. You can actually unsorter these four wires right here because there's only four of them. And um, they go to your sliders. <clears throat> but once we do this and we uh, take the, uh, the cable clamp out, <clears throat> we can take this unit completely down. And uh, then what you can do is get to the... Uh, the necessary parts of the uh, um, the springs themselves um, by removing this bottom plate. Once you do that, you'll see them up. They're on a little board, and the springs come out and they're soldered in. So we're going to do that next. <clears throat> We've decided it might be less trouble to go through the top, so we're going to do it this way. And uh, we're taking out the long screws at the first. Although this can be done from the bottom, the problem is you'll have all the return springs to come up against. And it looks like this way might be slightly easier. Well, maybe. In any case, we'll uh, just remove this. One thing we don't want to do is disturb this as much as possible because uh, lining up these things is uh, a little bit tricky. Now the next item that comes off for these screws at the front and uh, they um, they go into the blocks. Okay, we removed the top, and uh, this is the contact block uh, right here for a uh, the C. And this, as you can see, very carefully pulling this thing up with the actuator, you can see that one of them is missing, and the contact's broken right off. We'll pull this off the way that is, and now the board, as you can see, is easy to get to. And you can solder a new contact onto it. Right there. See it? <clears throat> Getting it back in is going to be more fun. In fact, it's going to be a lot more fun. <laughs> and you'll have to do this for every contact that's bad. Okay, we're uh, replacing the contact. Uh, this is the first one we did, which was just broken right off. Uh, this one was uh, broken off, replaced, and broken off again. So uh, what we're doing here is we're going to take the contact off, and that's what's left of it. There's not much at all. And what we're going to do is to um, get that solder uh, a little better acquainted at the bottom. Uh, this was obviously sorted in haste and done from the rear. Um, <laughs> but the uh, there's there's a blob, and uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a contact. Now this particular contact isn't going to fit perfectly in this in in this instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the contact. You see the spring part of it, and then we're going to take this portion right here, the hook. Because on other models that's soldered to. <clears throat> and we're going to remove that part of it. And we're going to take this, grip it with a long nose. Ah. And these are very tiny. You'll need a very fine pair of long nose. I recommend a tweezer. There we go. Pull that up. It's 
twice. I have to get something with a better tooth on it. I'll try it one more time. You have to grip carefully. Hold the wire steady until the solder sets. And once the solder sets <clears throat> so that it's in line with the other contacts, you can give it a slight bend. And as you can see, that's in with the other contacts, but as you can also see, it's slightly longer than the other contacts, but not by much. That's an example of changing a contact. We're going to do the same for every one that's broken, and then comes the fun part, putting it all back together. That's part of the problem getting this in. Oops. New felt. Mm -hmm. oh, that's all right. He's going to pay for it. The other one was no good. And that's like this. This is the ground wire which is out here. I just snipped it. It goes the bus bar goes between ground and, and the uh, these here. Have an actuator, right? What's, in, uh, what's a few actuators? ones on the far piece are plastic, they break easily. There we go. And these can be made out of G10. So there's a possibility if you get a broken one to make one. There we go. See, can I do this? Can I bend that up? A little more. Yeah, I think I know why they bothered to clip the leads the last time. It was uh, exercise and frustration. <laughs> and this way here, you can put these in at your leisure. I don't have to worry about the wires until later. But All right, we've, we've got this assembly uh, partially put together. As you can see, we've got the first octave in. And um, the, uh, the unit had to be taken uh, completely apart to be able to do this. And uh, one of the reasons we didn't, want to, we didn't want to have to sever any connections was to keep the unit as original as possible. But after seeing some burned wires and other things in there, we decided that this was a, a, probably a better way to go. Uh, what you wind up doing is putting this cage together, putting the actuators in first, I say, and the actuators go in first, and then what you do is you come in from the back 
with each individual set of cards, stick them in the actuator, the pins in the actuator, and then wedge the card in until such time as it's locked between the uh, two slats. Once you do that, you come back to the front, and using a tweezer, make sure that the individual pins, the whisker wires themselves, are in the proper location on the bus. And then the only thing we're going to do is, uh, because this was such a, uh, uh, a short harness with such short wires, some of them being burned because somebody had tried to change other contacts in there, um, and burn the wires up, and the insulation right off of it, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a little wire, about six inches or so, so that the next time um, the technician can sit there and take this whole assembly out like this, and then work on it, and the wire will be long enough to reach to the harness without having to tear this thing apart again. Needless to say, this is taking a little bit of time, and it seems to be about an hour an octave. Uh, by the time you get everything put together. This will be faster because there's a learning curve involved. Uh, if you choose to do this to your own unit, you'd better have the patience of Job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, the end after you're done, we put on the, uh, the springs again and we tighten them up. And um, once we do that, uh, the unit is pretty much ready to go except that it needs to be rewired. And um, we've marked, of course, every key. Uh, the, the numbers on the tags represent the key, and we know the, the order from top to bottom for the colors. So we've all written this down, and we recommend that to you. And if you should wind up breaking one of these things, as long as you can send us the original, we can have one, have them made for you, as well as the actuator. Uh, they will be made in fiberglass, not this phenolic stuff. Phenolic breaks, fiberglass is forever. And um, the, uh, the, uh, the capability of rebuilding this thing is pretty good, uh, since most of the bus leads in here are um, on our bright finish, and so are the, uh, um, the whisker wires themselves. And uh, we'll, uh, we're going to do some more of this and, and show you the completed unit when we're done.